Is this the right course of action, short-term pain for long-term market share? Well, I think it absolutely is. I mean, look at this, solid Q1 results, record delivery sold to 423,000 units on a way to doing 1.9 to 2 million units this year. That's stunning, 23.3 billion in revenues, slightly above forecast, net profit 2.5 billion, for the 15th consecutive profitable quarter, share price up 51% for the year. Hard to argue with those numbers, but I, I think they're doing the right thing. Cutting costs, expanding market share, that is a smart move. I mean, as you say, revenue is rising. It rose 24%, but you say it's hard to argue, but investors are arguing. They're cutting the overall market capitalization of this company on the day pretty hard. What do you think investors got wrong? Did they just get too ambitious in the short term? I think there is probably a bit of ebullience in the marketplace, but I think as people step back and look at this, as Elon said, this is essentially one of the most profitable auto companies in the world. They can afford to trigger a global price war, and that is just what they're doing. They've taken price cuts, uh, prices down six times this year already, twice more in the last 30 days. That's stunning, but they can afford to do it. Others can't. What's interesting here, and people need to understand, they say, is there a demand issue? Absolutely not. The entire world is going all electric. Customers bought 10 million electric vehicles last year. They're projected to be at 20 million vehicles a year within just three years. So there's not going to be a shortage of demand. Elon, I think, is smart. He's uh, buying market share when he can, and I think that move's going to pay off. I mean, it's worth reiterating, yeah, operating margin is down, but it's still above 11%. You look at GMs, that's just 6.6%. You look at Fords, that's just 4%. What, is there any concern around Elon and his navigation of this company at the moment? He's meant to be giving us the cyber production pretty soon, but he is still kind of distracted, it feels like, with what's going on with Twitter. And he's also got a space company that is running and making big strides on. Well, look, uh, who knows how distracted he, he uh, is. Just looking at the numbers, you've got to be pleased with a car company that's going from 1.31 uh, million in vehicle sales last year to 1.9 or 2 million this year. Factually, they're just growing faster than anybody else out there. Second, because Tesla has been smarter and executed better on the profitability issue because of three things. First, to bring battery production in-house, that lowers costs. Second, the clear leader in what's called OTA software. They're miles ahead of anybody else on that. Third, the clear leader in the robotization of the manufacturing process. They get cars produced in a fraction of the time of others. What has that led to? 2x the gross margins of Volkswagen, 3x the gross margins of Toyota, almost 5x the uh, gross margins of Ford. Now, those mm -hmm. numbers will come down a little bit, but as long as he can expand the Tesla name, I think Tesla's going to be looking awfully good. I think he's making a move that may hurt him a little bit for the short term, but it's going to pay big dividends for the long term. Steve, you talk about how demand is not the issue here. I just want to bring in another viewpoint from a key senior equity strategist at Federated Hermes. That's one Linda Dussel. Just have a listen to what she had to say. As we know, in these last couple of years with COVID, first you couldn't find a car and then there were too many cars. You know, there was a glut of used cars, et cetera. And so now... And now we have Tesla saying, basically saying, we'll sacrifice margins in the name of using this factory space that we have. So as long as the consumer still has money, then uh, yeah, that's a blessing. That's, that's a piece of uh, disinflation. And they'll probably take them up on it too. Anything, Steve, would make you second guess that the consumer has money? I, not at all. Look, I generally agree with what she said, but. What you've got to remember here is when Tesla first bought out the Model 3, for example, all out the door, it was about a $60,000 car. Today, it's at $40,000, and with government stimulus, it's really down to, and state stimulus that are also available, down to about thirty-two, thirty-three thousand. dollars $33,000. This is getting pretty close to where a Honda Accord is. At those prices, there is not going to be any demand issue, and I think that's why long-term uh, Elon's making the right move. What do you want to see from Elon in terms of his own investment now, in terms of continuing to expand production? Because when they had their sort of great master plan that they just came out with earlier this year, it felt like some of the production levels were just extraordinary. Well, they are extraordinary. You've got to look at most of the other competitors, GM, Ford, they have one or two EV plants up and running. Tesla already has four gigafactories. 
a new one in Monterey coming, which will be up literally in less than 12 months. New battery plants in Shanghai and uh, Lathrop already online. So Tesla, simply put, is just moving faster than others, and you got to give them credit for that. Just look at the numbers in comparison. Uh, you know, in the honorable mention category, uh, Ford announced mm. 10,000 EV unit sales compared to 423,000 for Tesla. General Motors at 20,000. They're not catching up. They're falling further behind. The fascinating yeah. news, if you step back and look at it, is the major competitors to Tesla are two Chinese companies, BYD and yeah. SAIC. This is a global changing of the guard. And I think investors should look back and see really three things. First, Tesla is extending their lead. Second, the Chinese are coming quickly. And third, a lot of these smaller firms, uh, Canoe and Fisker and so on that have come, Lordstown, they're just going to have a hard time making uh, the cut. Yeah. And I think Elon is pressing consolidation in the industry. And I think he's going to be the winner when all is said and done. Steve, I just want to drill in on that really interesting point about China. We know that actually some Chinese demand has been frustrated by the price cuts. But the Chinese investment is there. We know commitment to Shanghai, for example, not only with car production, but battery production. Are you worried about geopolitics here? We just hear that President Biden will unveil China investment curbs before the G7 summit. He doesn't want U.S. companies like Tesla investing in China. Yeah. Well, look, there's a tale of two cities here. Uh, on the upside, Tesla, uh, China is the world's largest auto market, and Tesla has moved quickly, put manufacturing facility there, and Tesla is killing it in China. The flip side of that curve is if there's ever a real estrangement, a, a geopolitical crisis, and anything like what happened in the Ukraine, where Russia nationalized a lot of our companies, Tesla would be in a world of hurt because 40% of their capacity comes from China today. But in the meantime, if you want to win in the auto industry, you got to be playing in China. It is the largest market in the world. Seven of the top 10 biggest selling EVs are Chinese names. So right now, Tesla has played the game well. And I think if you're Elon Musk, you have to be going to bed every night playing, uh, praying that the, uh, the Cold War with China doesn't get worse. Mm -hmm. Right now, he's looking awfully smart. We'll see.